Um, just to introduce ourselves, my name is Amy. This is Leslie. We are two of six ambassadors from Rock, responsible for events for FIDO. And we both are in agreement. We're very gracious and grateful to be here to have this opportunity. So, for that, for starters. Um, also, just while we go through, I'm going to give, we only have four copies. It's a little math we'll get to it through the program, but you can just have this on the tables and share. It's not that exciting, but <laughs> we wanted everyone to be able to see what we report. It's also in the regional. Yes, it's also in the regional, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I say we're ambassadors, we're ambassadors, we each have, a, each of the six ambassadors has an area that we're representing or, or monitoring, and you can see that in the Turf that we just handed out. And Leslie will talk about that in more detail. Um, we were formerly known as the North End Dog Group. You've probably never heard of it because it never got off the ground. Um, we gave it a facelift recently, and the, with the help of Matt and Phil and some other folks in the community, it's definitely, it's definitely gotten us some legs to get up and running. And so now here we have Rock. We're here basically to set a new standard by improving community relationships. We love our dogs, but we also love the neighborhood. We're here to create connections amongst people to educate dog owners, non-dog owners, so people are aware of the rules, the laws, um, and just basic issues that are in the neighborhood. We are a pretty serious group. I'm hoping we can continue the stamina to keep this moving forward. It is a big effort, uh, as we're finding out. But we did go from 18 members in mid-July to, as of this morning, we have 72 members. So we have made a big push, both through technology, word of mouth, and some other information, which Leslie will talk about shortly. So our, our goal is really to address some of the negative energy in the air about dog owners. Some of it is very valid with a positive spin. So in the next uh, next paragraph, why we started, we, we know there's a lot of negative energy out there. There's a, a lot of um, irresponsible dog owners. So our spin on it is to separate ourselves from those people. We know that those people are out there, but we want to distinguish ourselves from those people and say, while there are some bad ones, there's a big group of good ones. And we're going to do our best to try to police those that are following the rules. Um, we also want to create a safe place for our dogs, too. To sort of piggyback off of uh, what Amy says. We have started off, we sort of were like, oh my gosh, this is such a big issue. How can we make this something that we can actually work with? So we started off with six initiatives, and hopefully, fingers crossed, you guys have seen some of these signs throughout the neighborhood. We have had two rounds of postings of the signs, but you know, sometimes these signs mysteriously go missing from time to time. So we on the cleanups and other times that we're out in our ambassador sections, take note of which signs are missing and replace them periodically. But so these six initiatives, maintaining health, licensing dogs, respecting a property specifically, like urinating on potters, gates, steps, you know, buildings, that kind of common sense stuff that we all know happens. Um, we are putting them all around the playgrounds to make sure all the top lots are clear of dogs. We really, really are trying to stress that. Um, we're mindful of leash laws and proper disposal and pickup. Uh, so um, just if so everyone knows, another little thing that we can show her. These are just the dog licensings that everybody gets. I just brought two last year and this year's. Um, just if people haven't seen them before, all rough dog members are going to have to be licensed dogs with the city. So every dog will have one of these, whether they wear it, I carry trots my dogs in my wallet just because it switches this harness up all the time for fashion. But um, they all have these and we, when the animal control met with the parks committee, Tim brought another one of our ambassadors was able to talk to him and they have a list of all the unlicensed dogs in the North End. So as at, well, anyone that was registered before that didn't, you know, re-up or anything like that. So when we go to, you know, make our members official, they have to be on the list in order to be part of the group. We are working with Animal Control to bring them back to promote getting dogs licensed. In the they do come by once a year, so I hope they'll bring them back and push the initiative. It's a, it's a really easy process. <coughs> 
along with the signs, just to reach out to everybody here and in your neighborhoods, if you have a problem on your street or in your neighborhood and you want a sign, let us know. We will print one out, laminate it, and come and put it wherever you would like it. Um, you can get a hold of us, the emails at the bottom yeah. here, Boston North End Dog at Gmail. Right. We try to keep our email and like everything, so instead of people stewing and complaining amongst each other, they can sort of come to us and we can try to help that. Um, sort of just to tell you all where we are and what we've done, um, I'm going to give you what our short term focus has been on. Um, the maps that you all have on your tables show the six locations, which we've considered hot spots in the North End, and places that have parks. So places, a lot of places that we heard were complaining. The six hot spots that we have listed are the, the Greenway, the Prado, the ball fields, Richmond Park, the Flippio Park, uh, and Columbus Park. Doesn't mean there aren't other areas that aren't affected, but those are the ones that we heard most frequently, and that's how we developed that. So each one of those areas had an ambassador, and we tried to, you know, walk that location every day with our dog when we're out walking, and notice what's going on, talk to people who have dogs there, talk to residents, and try to gain more members through that as well. Um, this whole thing about this is that the group is we're in such a learning process. So if you have any suggestions for when you look at the map or you know for areas, please, please, please let us know. It's really important. Um, so the next thing that we've been doing is we had our first official monthly meeting last month. It was great. I thought. I mean, we're like a small little seed in this whole big thing, and and we felt like it went very well. Um, our next meeting is actually next Tuesday here at the Nazaro Center at 7 o'clock. So we encourage anybody with a dog or who loves dogs and wants to help kickstart things to come and join us. Um, we are open arms. So um, the other thing, another thing that we're doing short term, short term um, is like Amy said, is by identifying ourselves from other dogs that are or dog owners that are less responsible than our group are. And we have ordered ribbons to identify our group. They're going to be orange and navy. Um, they will say rough right on them, kind of like, you know, a breast cancer ribbon or something like that. And most likely be pinned to the dog's leash or collar, harness, something like that. But that way you'll know that that dog and that owner is acting in accordance with our standards and hopefully being a responsible, caring, loving dog person. So uh, the fourth thing that we've been doing is cleanups. We had a successful cleanup last month. We decided as a group that monthly cleanups are a must. We'll be doing them year round, even in the winter. You would think that that's maybe not a needed time, but it's probably the most needed time of the year. Um, I guess people think snow covers everything, but it doesn't. Um, so our next cleanup is August 19th at 9 a.m. Uh, we'll be breaking out into the locations that you see on the map. We clean up the trash as long with anything else that we find. Our last cleanup was very successful and we actually found less dog feces and more trash and human waste than we were <laughs> than we were expecting. So we were kind of proud that things were cleaner than we than we were anticipating. Um, another aspect of rough that we've been really trying to bring in is that as a networking aspect, you know, a lot of us when we have dogs, it's it's so you can meet people, your neighbors, get to know who lives on your street and make a big city a little bit smaller. So we're trying to host some events so I'm not like, oh hey Jake's mom. Jake's mom has no name besides that. Her name is Amy, you know, so we held um, a little bocce night last week, and that was fun. We had about 12 people come out to that. So we're hoping to do a little wiffle ball and potluck barbecue next. So just trying to keep things going and continue to reach out to new members is sort of our whole spin with that. Um, one of the biggest and most difficult things for us is confronting other dog owners who are not acting in accordance to what is respectful for our group and for residents. Um, 
there has been a bunch of emails that we've exchanged of encounters that we've had that have been difficult and awkward. Um, but it's something in our meetings that we talk about, like, what do you say if you see someone not pick up? Or how do you gently remind this person, you know what, this is a ball field for kids, but if you go to this piece, we can play over there with the dogs because the kids don't play on that. And so that's something that inside our meetings, we talk about language to use, and how to do it sort of in a more peaceful way. A lot of these things become very hostile. So we're just trying to educate our members on the best way to self-police because really with the dog park this is that's how it's gonna succeed is self-policing um in the pamphlet i gave you there's a bunch of things that we you know just look out for when we're out with our dogs you know carrying extra bags you know watching out for aggressive dogs just common sense stuff but it's just stuff we like to reiterate to our group um, so those are sort of our short-term, like right now, happenings. Um, ultimately, our long-term goal is a dog park. Um, the dog population is growing, and there's a lot of interesting spaces um, in and around the North End. And we have met, you know, we've thrown a lot of ideas around at the parks meetings, at our meetings, you know, when we sit around and are at the park, we're always talking about it. So we have a lot of ideas, but it's a process. It's a very grueling process. It takes a lot of money, a lot of people, a lot of cooperation, and even commitment and creativity. I mean, the list is endless. Um, but we're trying. <laughs> we're really trying. We have, we have a, the Six Ambassador team. We do research on successful dog parks, parks that fail. We are seeing how much it's cost to set up some other parks, how much do we need to have trust to take it down and if things don't work out. So we're putting in the legwork and you know when when we get through that, hopefully we can work with you know, city officials, neighborhood officials, and find something that can work, you know, cooperatively for everyone. So we are looking for creative ideas. We did find one group at MIT, we haven't heard back from them, so if anybody has um, just trying to come up with ideas to help push this along. Um, one of the ideas was these methane tanks that a guy at MIT created. We put the dog poop into and it breaks it down and powers the lighting. Oh, wow. Wow. Something like that would be it. So, you know, he was hoping to pilot this and we reached out to him to see and he just happens to be in Cambridge by the luck of the draw. Um, but just different ideas to help make this a success. And, uh, we're open to you. anything. I mean, literally, we will fill out any application. <laughs> we will jump through whatever hoop. I mean, so. We want to find some sort of compromise in the community because we know it's become a boiling point at this point. So. I think that we'll open it up to questions. We really appreciate you guys.